Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us for a daily video. Today we're going to be talking about Alan Edmonds. So come join us and check it out. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to be talking about particular shoe brands now. Um, we kind of jumped the gun with some of our videos, but I know some of you out there still aren't too familiar with brands of shoes, what we would recommend um, from a cobbler standpoint. I've been in the industry my entire life, so I've worked on a number of different footwear and just I've seen it all evolve and change. So I'm going to start recommending different types of brands of shoes and talk a little bit about them. What are some of the good sides of it? What are some of the bad sides of it? And one of the most infamous brands that I thought is a must. I know some of you know about them, some of you don't, but we have to start with Allen Edmonds. Allen Edmonds has been around for quite some time. They've been doing a number of different styles of shoes, different builds, different um, you know patterns and things like that. There are some great models that have been around for decades. There are some new models. There are some models that have been dropped, but there's an entire community revolving around the entire brand. They have Allen Edmonds enthusiasts on Facebook. They have an entire Instagram page that are dedicated and made by just the people who love the brand not necessarily even the company the brand is actually very very particular about you know advertising in such manners they are not allowed to they they don't they don't make these groups so all these groups that if you end up finding a group like on facebook alan edmund enthusiast that's created by an enthusiast somebody who loves the brand so definitely check out that group if you're new to the footwear industry but let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the brand now, Allen Edmonds has been around for nearly 100 years, since 1922. They're out of Port Washington as their main facility. Um, they've had a different facility in a different location, and off the top of my head, I can't remember it, but the most important one is Port Washington, that they've been there for quite some time. They have great staff. They're very flexible about what they do, so if you end up ordering a pair and it doesn't fit quite right, they're very easy to work with. They have brick-and-mortar stores all over the U.S. They have stores that sell their brand. They have their own online website. There are websites that also sell it that are not directly affiliated with the brand. They just sell their product, so it's very easy to work with the brand over overall and trying to find what you need, what style, what size and shape and everything. Um, but touching on that sizing and shaping, Allen Edmonds is one of those brands that if you have an oddly sized foot, if you say have a long foot that's very narrow, they have a number of different widths and a lot of different styles. Uh, they will go from A width to triple E, which is the width sizing if you're not familiar with that. Um, they have a number of different lengths, obviously. They also have different last styles. So if you got the right size in a particular style, but it just does not fit right, try a different model with a different last build. That can actually change it drastically. I have a couple of pairs of Allen Edmonds myself, two different styles, two different sizes that I had to get because the last was different. So you may have to kind of almost experiment and that's where it comes into play that Allen Edmonds is very flexible on their returns and exchanges. They also have their factory second option too. So if you're not wanting to spend the money on it, you can go for the factory second to test out on your first pair. It's kind of like they had a bit of an issue and maybe the issue is something very minor, like maybe those uh, minor little uh, discoloration on the leather. Uh, for some people that's a big deal, for others it's not. Uh, personally, as a cobbler, I mean, for me, factory second isn't an issue, but every now and then you get that factory second that just, whoa, well, you know, better not get that pair. So, you know, I leave it up to you to make that decision. Uh, there are resale sites where if there's a certain model that's no longer available and has been discontinued, uh, you can get some of those uh, rare limited edition models or ones that are no longer being made as well. Um, but definitely, if you're wanting to get into that brand, start out with uh, Alan Edmund Enthusiast on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook account, definitely create one just for the group alone, and you're definitely going to be able to talk to some amazing guys and girls on there that, um, you know, 
they love the brand, they know just about everything about it. So it's very interesting. Um, as far as their build, typically most of the Allen Edmonds traditionally you would find are built somewhat like this. This is the player model here, that's the style of the name. This one's not a very common one because it's the suede upper. Uh, we're still working on this one, putting on new day night soles on them. So as you can tell, we haven't even sanded out the inside of the heel yet. And there's still some markings from when we traced out the sole, but we're going to still show it off anyways. Uh, typically, Allen Edmonds has a number of different soles. You could go with the day-night option like this here, uh, where it's a rubber sole. They have Vibram soles available as well. They have combination soles, similar to what this one right here has, where it's leather and rubber on top. They have all leather options too, so you have a great variety of options that you can pick from, um, and it's just comes down to what you prefer. Uh, as far as construction on the inside, they typically have uh, cork for your cushioning, your um, you know just support features. It helps wick away moisture and gives a little bit of insulation. Cork is very nice to have, but keep in mind when you buy a pair for the first time or put them on brand new out of the box, they might not be as comfortable as some brands that you've tried on in the past where those brands are molded sole they're kind of cheaper made but when you pull those ones out of the box put them on they feel like gloves there's a lot of cushion and everything in those particular ones but if you want to invest in a beautiful pair of shoes that can last you not only decades but even generations Allen Edmonds I've had pairs come through that have been handed down three four generations that have been recrafted time and time again this shoe is really designed to be recraftable and they even have their own recraft options and services available through Allen Edmonds now obviously as a cobbler that's kind of shooting myself in the foot with it, but there's a difference between cobblers and Allen Edmonds recraft services, one of which is day-night soles in particular, original factory soles. They do not do what's called channeling, so the stitch just sits over top of the sole. It could be from Allen Edmonds, it could be from other brands that are worth thousands of dollars. No company will ever channel it, but there are a handful of, a handful of cobblers in North America that will actually pre-channel the stitches or pre-channel the sole and then stitch through it. So as you can see right here, that stitch is sitting on the inside. Obviously you might be able to see a little bit of dust because these are still a work in progress, but that kind of gives you an idea. Unfortunately, I didn't have a pair that uh, we haven't started working on yet with a day-night sole where it wasn't uh, pre-channeled to be able to show you, but go into any Allen Edmonds store or go on their website and you'll be able to see close-up pictures of what's going on and you'll see that that stitch is just sitting over top. Nothing too wrong with that. I mean, obviously the adhesive holds it in place very well, so if you wear through the stitches, you're perfectly fine. It's gonna hold up for a very long time, but having that channel area there for the stitch to sit in just gives it a little extra layer of protection over a long period of time. Now, Allen Edmonds has been doing some crazy stuff since they got bought up by Calaris. So Calaris, yes, they got bought up by that company. Um, it's basically a holdings company and they started doing some very odd stuff. Me as a cobbler and as an avid enthusiast of the brand, I'm not too happy with they've been just doing some crazy stuff uh they're coming out with like tennis shoes and flip-flops so no comment on that side of things just because i'm not happy about it um but they do also have certain models like this one here this is the uh, uh maxfield which is blake stitched meaning that this stitch right here goes all the way through the inside of the shoe here so instead of your typical goodyear welted where it's stitched around the edges it's stitched on the inside now there's nothing wrong with that it's considered to be the next step down from a goodyear welted like this but hey it's uh it, it's still better than some of the other brands out there that are not stitched at all so definitely definitely a great uh great build still even with their blake stitch models um but their goodyear welted ones that's that's kind of like their primary style that every enthusiast is after uh, typically they don't use a leather stacked heel base they use a fiber board so that is kind of looked and frowned upon but hey that thing holds up very well actually uh, the Goodyear well team they do full 360 meaning that it's stitched all the way around um, it does look a little bit chunkier not quite so low profile and slim but it does add a little bit of a waterproof aspect or watertight seal aspect so water doesn't seep into the shoe as easily um, so that's definitely a huge one that a lot of people love 
Now, typically when you're looking at Allen Edmonds, majority of their shoes are a full, full grain upper, uh, or like in this case, this one is suede here. They do have what's called CXL, which is an oil-based leather. So it's kind of like almost greasy feeling. Um, they've got shell cordovans. They've got a number of different finish types as well. So it really comes down to what you really like, but they are very good about uh, their quality. They tend to get most of their hides from Horween uh, Tanning Factory, which is in North America, one of the very few tanning companies around but they still do very very phenomenal work a lot of us cobblers even order from that company directly or if not directly you know we still order horween leather products uh, indirectly in other words uh, as far as interior construction typically these ones they don't have really any kind of like insole or padding or anything you just have the leather uh, midsole that they build the shoe around and then underneath that is the cork and so you have to give it some time to break in be patient with them don't get frustrated and say I can't wear these things if you're buying your very first pair you know wear it for a couple of weeks you know I'm not saying wear it all day long every day if your feet are not used to it your feet are gonna hurt if, you, if you're switching over from say tennis shoes to trying to dress up nicer or from a cheaper shoe in general that's a dress shoe to something higher grade build um, you know you're gonna you're gonna have to break in your feet a little bit too as well as break in the shoes so give it some time now typically these do have shanks in them, a wooden one. Uh, sometimes they have what's called a little shank pad, in other words, to help certain nails grip better. But not all of them have a shank. It really depends on the particular build or style of the shoe. And unfortunately, as cobblers, we can't seem to catch on which models have the shank and which ones don't. It's almost like hit and miss. I've seen park avenues that have a shank and some that don't. But typically what I've found that the shanks are included in most of the shoes that have uh, a rubber day night sole and then some of the leather ones as well leather is typically harder so they probably look at it as oh we don't need a shank for this one so that's just one of those other things um, the rest of the inside here on these is leather liner so definitely definitely a good thing uh, to have if you're wanting to have these last for a while and if you still want to be able to repair certain aspects of it it can be done when it comes to something that has a synthetic liner inside makes it a lot harder to repair and do any kind of minor work on it or large work on it as well. Now, due to the construction of Allen Edmonds, your sole options are just about limitless. I mean, as far as at least the Goodyear welted models, the Blake Stitch, you do have certain limitations, but with a Goodyear welted model like this, I mean, you could, you could use just about almost any sole. There are options to be able to do a wedged fibrum sole like that. You could do something a little bit heavier like this one here. I mean, you could do low profile. You could do a number of leather soles, combination soles. You could do leather with a rubber over top of it like this one here. You could do a day-night sole. You, you could do so many things with it. So there are a lot of opportunities to be able to test out different things when it's time to resole your shoes. Again, there are going to be some limitations if you ship them back to Allen Edmund for the recrafting um, because there are some soles that they just they refuse to stock. But you got a few options. One thing I will like to mention though, however, these day night soles that you see on Allen Edmonds, Allen Edmonds has a blue option where uh, blue, red, brown, and black, as well as now this kind of like greenish uh, light color basically it's hard to explain but um it's a lighter green color almost in other words uh currently cobblers we can only get the red the black and the brown the green one is still not available to us at the moment i've talked to the day night factory that makes them and they're they're a work in progress for us cobblers to be able to get our hands on the blue one however unfortunately it's exclusive only to alan edmonds and the reason why this is for all of you avid enthusiasts especially reason why cobblers and no one else can get their hands on is because alan edmonds actually owns that machine that makes the blue day night soles and so only alan edmonds could get their hands on it if you want a blue one uh, us cobblers we can put on something for you that's a different brand which is no problem but if you're really after that blue one in particular your limitation is only going back to Allen Edmonds and if you have another brand of shoe that you want that blue day night sole on I'm sorry but it's just they're not going to do it for you so I thought I'd point that out real quick as well now one last thing we'll touch on about Allen Edmonds is one of those that there's a huge following for it, but there are some people that hate them they hate them they say they're over exaggerated and everything and it's it's fair you know because at the price point for this quality level of shoe and everything they're phenomenal i mean you've got prices ranging from 
200 to averaging about 500. They have models that are even more than that. You can find some used pairs or factory seconds under the $200 mark as well. So there's a huge price range as well available. But due to that, if you're comparing it to other good, Goodyear welted shoes in the same category, those other brands will be a little bit more expensive, but they're a little bit more uh, oriented on quality control as well. For the price point, Allen Edmund is a great entry level. It's a great shoe to have, you know, a couple of pairs of and everything. But keep in mind for that price point, um, you may have a few quality control issues here and there. Maybe one stitch or two are off. Maybe there's a little bit of sanding mark somewhere that just wasn't right. You know, there's there's a few things. If you're wanting a perfectly made shoe that's good, you're welted, that there are you know, no issues whatsoever, you would probably have to start going towards $1,000 plus to, if you're after perfection. Unfortunately, if you start going under that $1,000 mark, you know, even an $800, $900 pair of shoes, I have noticed there, there are some little issues with, it, with the quality control. And I just had a pair in that, I had a pair of $800 shoes in here, which are beautiful, but there were some minor stitch issues here and there. Nothing major, but I uh, thought I'd point that out. So, now I guess uh, now we'll say one last thing about Allen Edmonds. Because of the uh, buyout by a holdings company, uh, since then they've been do doing a lot of changes. Hopefully the brand still stays intact as far as certain styles, at least sticking to their quality builds and uh, the way they're designed. But if... Uh, if things start to really drastically change, I'm hoping that doesn't. Uh, so in the meantime, if you don't have a pair, get at least a pair or two, you know, it's, it's a well-worthy investment. Like I said, they could last for generations, you know, I mean, they, they don't necessarily just hold up for five, 10 years or something like that. I mean, generations. So it's a well-worthy investment in general. And especially if Alan Edmonds does take that route and doing something crazy, You'll have a you'll have a pair that's just kind of has history to the to the shoe itself. Also, um, since the buyout, Allen Edmonds has been doing a lot more things where it comes to making belts and other things, which is great and not so great um, for the avid enthusiast. They think that's kind of like a sellout type of thing. But then there are those who like to collect or they need something to match. So if you need a belt that matches a particular color, typically they'll have a belt that matches it fairly well. Uh, quality in their belts. Um, there are a few models that I like. I actually have one, but there are a few that I will never buy for myself just because even for me as a cobbler, I know something's going to give out on that particular model of belt and fixing it for myself. It's just not even worth my time basically just because I, I can already see and predict what's going to happen. But I'll leave that all up to you to decide. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Swing by the shop if you're local in the Denver area or send us a message. All of our contact is on our website at cobblersplus.com. And, uh, you know, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell icon to stay tuned for future videos on other brands that we'll be talking about. Typically, we'll be talking about certain brands once a week, and we'll cover certain shoe products like leather cares, accessories, and a number of other things. So definitely hit that notification bell icon if you've been enjoying watching it. It's very educational for you, and we'll see you next time.